hello everyone this is my first video on this channel i'll try my best to complete all the important topics of biochem in one month so without wasting a single time let's start my first topic is urea cycle you know it is one of the most important topic from university point of view it can come as long question as well as short question so we will see in both the aspects if it come as long question then what we will write and if it come as short then what we will write so uh, the subtopics will be i'll first explain the introduction then the whole cycle the energetic regulation and the disorders so let's start without wasting a single moment urea cycle urea cycle is also known as ornithine cycle what can be the reason behind this name ornithine cycle Th this is because ornithine is the first member of the reaction so urea cycle is also known as ornithine cycle and urea cycle is also known as krebs henslet urea cycle and the reason behind this name is the urea cycle is the first metabolic pathway to be elucidated in 1932 by hans krebs and kurt henslet so it is also known as krebs henslet urea cycle in the exam it can be written as ornithine cycle krebs henslet urea cycle so don't get confused all the names are same as you know the final product of urea cycle will be urea and in urea there will be there are two nitrogen atoms so the first nitrogen atom will come from ammonia and the other will come from alpha amino group of aspartic acid so the both the sources of the nitrogen in a urea are different first from ammonia and the other is from alpha amino group of aspartic acid so let's start its cycle see figure 14.13 it is very clear and this figure is very important for you if in exam urea cycle come as short or long you have to make this cycle so i'll so look at the first step what happening what is happening in first step one molecule of ammonia condenses with co2 in the presence of two molecule of atp to form carbomyl phosphate as you can see carbomyl phosphate is forming in the very first reaction and there is a consumption of two molecules of atp and the enzyme will be carbomyl phosphate synthetase 1 why not carbomyl phosphate synthetase 2 this must be a question why not carbomyl phosphate synthetase 2 and the reason behind is the carbomyl phosphate synthetase is found in mitochondria but whereas 2 is found in cytoplasm and the whole reaction is taking place in not the whole reaction step 1 of this cycle is taking place in mitochondria so the enzyme will be carbomyl phosphate synthetase 1 what what are the other differences between carbomyl phosphate synthetase 1 and carbomyl phosphate synthetase 2 carbomyl phosphate synthetase 1 is involved in urea formation and carbomyl synthetase phosphate synthetase 2 these are involved in pyrimidine nucleotide synthesis so uh, so you can also mention the difference between these two reaction this these two enzymes The f this very first step is the rate limiting step in urea formation it is irreversible and electrically regulated it is the rate limiting step in urea formation now comes come to second step what, see what is happening in second step there is a formation of citrulline and the carbomyl group of carbomyl phosphate is transferred to the ns2 group of ornithine and the enzyme is ornithine transcarbomylase as this reaction will take place as this um, will take place citrulline will move towards the cytoplasm and the further all the steps of this cycle will take place in cytoplasm so step 1 and step 2 were taking place in mitochondria and as citrulline moves fr uh, from mitochondria to cytoplasm all the further steps are taking place in cytoplasm now see the step 3 step 3 formation of argininino succinate as i have told you there are two nitrogen atoms in urea first were coming from ammonia and the second was coming from alpha amino group of aspartic acid so in this reaction one molecule of aspartic acid will be added to citrulline 
and it will form a carbon to nitrogen bonds which will provide second nitrogen atom of urea and the enzyme involved will be arginose succinate synthetase as it is very clearly given in the figure that this needs hydrolysis of atp to amp level so two high energy phosphate bonds are utilized in this reaction as you can see amp plus ppi two high energy phosphate bonds are utilized now in step 4 come to step 4 what is happening in step 4 arginosuccinate is cleaved by arginosuccinate lyase to form arginine and fumarate as you know this enzyme arginosuccinate lyase is inhibited by fumarate so you this would be this will be your question so why if fumarate is forming here why fumarate is not inhibiting this reaction this is because the fumarate further is funneled into tca cycle it will further move to the tca cycle and get converted into malate and then further to oxaloacetic acetate so in this way urea cycle is also linked to the tca cycle through fumarate this can be a question in exam also how urea cycle is linked to the tca cycle so you will explain this reaction this step that when arginosuccinate is cleaved by arginosuccinate lyase to arginine and fumarate the argi the, the fumarate will move towards funnel into a tca cycle and in this way this both reactions are interlinked now step 5 step 5 is the formation of urea this is the final step final reaction of this cycle and what is happening here hydrolysis of arginine to urea and ornithine by enzyme arginase so ornithine will further returns to the mitochondria to react with another molecule of carbomyl phosphate so that the cycle will proceed so we can say that the arginine arginine is a ornithine is a catalyst which enters the reaction and is regenerated now comes to the energetics energy as in step 1 i told you there are two atp is consumed and in step 3 four high energy phosphate bonds are used all together four high energy phosphate bonds are used in step 1 plus step 3 step 1 2 step 3 also 2 so it is four and as fumarate will move towards the tca cycle so the malate will be formed and in in that reaction 1 nadh will be formed and 1 nadh will be equivalent to 2.5 atp so 4 minus 2.5 that is 1.5 so the net energy expenditure is only 1.5 high energy phosphates now come to regulation of the urea cycle so first in course regulation we will see the enzyme level changes with the protein content of the diet all the enzymes which is present in urea cycle will be changed according to the protein content of the diet what will happen during starvation during starvation the activity of urea cycle enzyme is will be increased to meet the increased rate of protein catabolism now what will happen in fine regulation as i have earlier told you the step 1 is the rate limiting step of this urea formation so the enzyme involved was carbomyl phosphate synthetase 1 and acetyl glutamate is a positive effector of carbomyl phosphate synthetase 1 it is formed from glutamate plus acetyl coenzyme and arginine is a is an activator of nag synthase so this comes under fine regulation now what will come under compound compartmentalization as i have told you that the first two step is taking place in mitochondria and as the citrulline is moving to the cytoplasm the further steps are taking place in cytoplasm so there can be one more reason why fumarate is not inhibiting the enzyme that enzyme i have earlier told you that the fumarate is an inhibitor of arginosuccinate lyase this is also because the inhibitory of effect of fumarate on its own formation is minimized because arginosuccinate lyase is in the cytoplasm whereas fumarase is in the mitochondria now let's come
द डिसऑर्डर्स ऑफ यूरिया साइकिल दिस वन इज द लास्ट ऑफ इट्स सब टॉपिक्स डेट इज डिजीज ऑफ यूरिया डिसऑर्डर्स ऑफ द यूरिया साइकिल वी विल मेनली फोकस टू सिक्स डेट इज हाइपर अमोनिया टाइप वन हाइपर अमोनिया टाइप टू हाइपर ऑर्निथेमिया सिट्रोलिनेमिया आर्गिनोसक्सिनिक एसिड यूरिया एंड हाइपर आर्जिनेमिया सो फर्स्ट लेट्स सी हाइपर अमोनेमिया टाइप वन आई एल ट्राई टू एक्सप्लेन यू थ्रू द फिगर इन हाइपर अमोनेमिया टाइप वन इंजाइम डिफेक्ट विल बी सिट्रोलिन फॉस्फेट सिंथेटेज वन सो वट विल हैपन इफ दिस इंजाइम विल नॉट वर्क देर वेरी हाई एनर्जी एन एस थ्री लेवल इन ब्लड विल बी फाउंड सो द फीचर्स विल बी वेरी हाई इन एन एस थ्री लेवल इन ब्लड ऑटोजोमल रेजेसिव मेंटल रिटार्टेशन एंड दिस इज वेरी वेरी रेयर इंसिडेंस इन वन इन वन लैक वन इन वन लैक The second disease is hyperammonemia type two, and the enzyme defect ornithine transcarbamylase. So, what will happen if this enzyme will not work? There will be ammonia level high in blood, increased glutamine in blood, CSF and urine. And remember one thing: it is X-linked X-linked condition. All the others will be autosomal recessive inheritance, but this would be X-linked. So, this is to be noted. Now, come in hyper ornithine ornithinemia. What will be the enzyme defective ornithine transporter protein? What will happen? What will be the features? Feature will be failure to import ornithine from cytoplasm to mitochondria. If there will be a defective, you this is very common you can use your brain also that if there would be a defect in ornithine transporter protein what will happen ornithine will not be able to move ornithine will not be able to transfer from cytoplasm to mitochondria this will be the feature feature will be failure to import ornithine from cytoplasm to mitochondria and the defect in and the defect in ornithine ornt1 gene will also be be present there this defect will also be seen and there will be decreased urea in blood and autosomal recessive condition now citrullinemia what will happen in citrullinemia the enzyme defect will be arginosuccinate and the feature will be autosomal recessive inheritance high le blood level of synthetase ammonia and citrulline the other disease is arginosuccinate aciduria and the enzyme defect will be arginosuccinate lysis and the feature would be arginosuccinate in blood and urine what will happen in hyperarginemia the enzyme defect is arginase so what will be the feature arginase will increase in blood and csf instead of arginine cysteine and lysine are lost in the urine and this incident it this incident is also very rare that is one in la 1 lakh so now i'll explain you hepatic coma in a in a very precise way come to hepatic coma hyperammonemia is a characteristic feature of liver failure what is happening in this condition the this conditions is first of all i let you know the condition is also known as portal systematic encephalopathy normally what happens the ammonia and other toxic compounds produced by the intestinal bacteria metabolism are transferred to the liver by the portal circulation and there they are detoxified by the liver but but when there is portal systemic shunting of the blood the toxin bypass the liver and their connection is systemic circulation rises and their concentration in systemic circulation will rise so this will cause hepatic coma and the signs and symptoms will be cns dysfunction jaundice edema this will be seen no, the normal blood urea level is taken as indicator of renal function the normal blood urea level in plasma is 20 to 40 mg per deciliter 
urinary excretion of urea is 15 to 30 gram per day and the corresponds to the breakdown of 40 to 80 gram of protein per day now here is the topic is topic urea cycle is completed i hope you all understood this topic if you really liked my video then please like share and subscribe thank you